an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching. To help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life. Through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM certified wellness coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie. Winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie. Today, we're going to continue with a series on hypertrophy. And I, I just think it's funny. I always think of this story years ago, years ago. I was at a conference and I was doing something on the topic of hypertrophy. And I'm not a big guy. I mean, I'm jacked for a little guy, but I'm not a big guy. I'm not a big guy. And I remember a colleague of mine who was at NASM at the time, Scott Pullen, was a big guy and like obsessed with with being big and strong. And he was. And he was doing one on hypertrophy and he comes over and he stands next to me and he crosses his arms and he just looks down at me because he is also taller. And he looks down at me and he goes, whose course do you think people are going to show up for? And (laughs) and I laugh. I think about that all the time as I'm doing these topics on hypertrophy. But here's the thing. My brain is hypertrophic. And I've been studying this, so I've got some good information for you today. Today's topic is going to be eccentric versus concentric for hypertrophy training. And there are a lot of people out there that are loving eccentric training. It's not always for hypertrophy, but there's some evidence out there that shows that the eccentric portion can benefit hypertrophy training. Hypertrophy, of course, is the increase in size in our skeletal muscles. So we want to increase our skeletal muscle hypertrophy. Well, let's get into a little bit about this. Now, you may know that eccentrically, eccentric is when you are losing to gravity. It's when the muscle lengthens under tension. So for instance, in a squat, it is the descent into the squat that is the eccentric phase. It's the negative. The concentric phase is the positive. It's the lifting portion. And so we're going to be talking about eccentric, the deceleration of force, versus concentric, the acceleration of force for hypertrophy purposes. And I think it's interesting because you know that you are stronger during the eccentric phase. For instance, like a a hundred pounds, like a barbell curl. Like I can't curl a hundred pounds, but I, if you put a hundred pounds in my arms in a curled position, I could lower it. I could, I could put it down. I just can't pick it up. Why? Because we're stronger eccentrically than we are concentrically. We can decelerate force better than we can accelerate force. There's a study by Bauman et al. It was back in 2001, but he studied this and said that eccentric strength is approximately 20 to 50% more than concentric strength. You're 20 to 50% stronger in the deceleration phase, in the negatives, than you are in the lifting phase. And several studies have shown that eccentric actions increase muscle hypertrophy. There's Fathering at all, Friedman at all, 2004, Higby at all in 1996, Norbrandt at all in 2008. The Fathering it was in 2003. Yes, eccentric does cause greater muscle damage, and I think this might be what you're thinking about. Well, that's because it damages the muscles. The muscles have to repair themselves, and as they repair themselves, the building up of that process is what makes us stronger or more hypertrophic. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case either. We know from studies with tools like blood flow restriction training, due to the very, very relatively light loads, the eccentric process is minimal. And yet the hypertrophic process, the gains that you get from the blood flow uh, restriction, are excellent. So 
is it really that helpful? The eccentric training, that helpful? Well, Brad Schoenfeld, and if you, if you know hypertrophy training and researchers, you probably knew that that name was going to come up. So Brad Schoenfeld et al. 2017. Oh, here we go. A systematic review and meta-analysis. That's kind of what we're waiting for. We, we get a lot of little information. I read out several of the authors that found eccentric training increased hypertrophy. But now let's get a meta-analysis. Let's go through. And there were over a thousand studies that they were able to find that that discussed either or. And yet they had to whittle it down because it had to be a comparison between the two. And so some you would get these comparisons where it is only concentric training and only eccentric training. And they ended up with about 15 studies that they could pull from. And the, the inclusion criteria of those 15 studies, here's the takeaway. This is what they said in the paper. And this is the quote, ready? Our primary analysis found that on average, eccentric training produced greater increases in hypertrophy compared with concentric training. Wait, I know you're getting really excited. Wait, here it is. 10% versus 6.8% respectively. Based on Hopkins et al. scale, these results were likely or probably not due to chance alone. However, there is a difference of that indicates that the hypertrophic advantages of eccentric training was relatively small. So the findings support previous research showing a modest hypertrophic benefit with the use of eccentric actions. So we had a lot of studies that were purporting that eccentric training is very valuable to hypertrophy training, and it is, but... It's a modest hypertrophic benefit. Uh, what they would say in this analysis is that it is not of statistical significance. Here's what was also interesting. I thought this was kind of cool. Three of the studies performed biopsies and showed that all three of these found greater increase in size of type 2 muscle fibers when it, uh, versus concentric training. And so a muscle biopsy is where they literally take a, like a, a plug of your muscles and then they can they can explore the size of that under a microscope. Um, and not the most common way of doing that because it doesn't feel good. Uh, and there are other ways that they might do. So bioelectric impedance, they might do some type of imaging, uh, but, a, but a plug, a, uh, a biopsy is something that they can do. Also, eccentric only exercises are slightly better at hypertrophy than concentric only. Eccentric only versus concentric only. But here's my question. Who does that? Who does concentric only or eccentric only? By the way, if you do eccentric only, how do you get it back up? So concentric only, I can see that happening because, because you might have people that are doing like Olympic lifts and the Olympic lifts, when you go into a clean or a snatch, a lot of times they just drop the weight when they're done. That's how the Olympic lifts are done. But otherwise, concentric or eccentric only, that's not really how we lift with the eccentric and not the concentric or the concentric and not the eccentric. Or you could be those people at the gym that just drop weights because you just drop weights. You're like, I'm very strong. Look how strong I am, except for this part. <sighs> Annoying. As a gym owner, annoying. As a gym goer, annoying. But anyway, how can we then, because we do know there's benefit from eccentric training, how can we implement eccentric training into our training? I'm going to give you two ways that you can do it. One is called forced reps. All right. And that's with you. That's with you as the personal trainer. You have the client do two to four reps at the end of their set when they're already ready to give up. So for instance, they get to the point they've done 10 reps and they can't get number 11. They're like, I don't know. I don't think I can do this anymore. And they're going to put it down. They get great. Give me two negatives or give me three negatives or give me four negatives. And so you are helping lift that bar up. Let's say bench press, right? So you're helping lift the bar up and now they lower it back down all the way. They try to push up and you help them lift it up and they lower it back down by themselves again, all the way down. Now, of course, 
our ability to do this depends on how well we can actually lift the bar because we do not want to get into a position where somebody's much stronger than us and we can't help them lift that weight up. So you can help them in, in like free weights that can be challenging. Uh, in fixed path of motion machines, it's a lot easier because it ends up being like, oh, we, I can't help lift it up. It doesn't matter. Put the weight down and the person is safe anyway. So there are important means at which you choose to do this and you have to be able to support them in the process. But this is called forced reps. Or as we usually say in the gym, instead of saying forced reps, we say, all right, let's get some negatives. <laughs> so you get some negatives at the end. Now there is another type and it's called supra maximal training or supra maximal technique. And I'm going to pull this from an article by Aaron Bubico and Dr. Lynn Kravitz, who is one of my favorite, favorite teachers of all times. He's a researcher in University of New Mexico, and he is that person that you're like, I wish you were my professor. I wish that I could sit at your feet and learn from you because he is smart, he is entertaining, he is funny, he is quirky, and he talks about fitness. So this is the quote from the paper. It says, one popular eccentric training technique is called the, quote, supramaximal technique, where the client lifts a weight with the aid of a personal trainer that's about 105 to 125% of their normal load, then lowers the weight eccentrically in three to four seconds. All right. So there we're starting. This isn't, this isn't forced reps at the end. This is just eccentric training. So we the trainer helps lift the weight up and then the client lowers it down gives about a three to four counts and then pushes up with the assistance of the trainer of slow three to four count down and we're overloading the bar 105 percent to 125 percent greater than what it is that they're normally lifting and i think this is a pretty cool application so two applications forced reps and super maximal technique are ways that you can implement eccentric training into your training protocols. Is it beneficial? Yes. Is it more beneficial than concentric training? Yeah, maybe. Is it important because you can do more eccentric training even after your concentric lifts have given up or exhausted? Yeah. Yeah, that's really important. I think that's quite helpful. And this is something that you as a fitness professional can start adding into your repertoire as you start getting into more and more advanced lifting techniques. All right. Thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being here. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. And if you want to reach out to me, you can do so. Hit me up on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or email me at rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Keep inspiring people to fitness. Thank you so much for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.